In the number 10 spot, we have Iggy Azalea. Azalea was incredibly popular in 2014 with people everywhere singing along to her hits like Fancy and Problem to celebrate her newfound success. Dancing with the Stars invited her to perform Fancy on the live finale. I'm so sorry, but there's something wrong with my ears. Unfortunately, the potential disasters of live TV struck and Azalea bungled the start of her performance. According to her, there was an issue with the playback in her earpiece. Sadly, this incident brought an unfortunate end to her great year. Furthermore, unrelated problems with her record label caused Azalea's career to slow down. She is currently on an extended hiatus. I'm no expert, but I was looking very closely. There's nothing wrong with her ear. Oh, no, no, That's no, no, no. That's a fine ear right there. The ting goes in number 9, Mariah Carey. It's hard to bring down a legend like Mariah Carey, but her appearance on Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve in 2016 nearly did it. This was a monumental disaster of a performance. Just rub me down. I'm trying to be a good sport here. We're missing some of this logo, but it is what it is. Carey's earpiece began to malfunction, causing her to go out of sync with the backing track. So she not only could not hear herself, she couldn't hear the music. The tingles. In number eight, Steve Harvey, one of the busiest TV hosts of our time, he was hired to MC Miss Universe 2015 in Las Vegas. In a moment that lives in infamy, Harvey accidentally crowned Miss Columbia as the winner. These women have been working for this moment their entire lives, and now it's time to find out our winner. Columbia! In reality, she was the first runner-up, a mistake he corrected after awkwardly sauntering back on stage amid the celebrations. I have to apologize. I will take responsibility for this. It was my mistake. Regardless, the incident was relentlessly mocked on social media and the host's reputation was briefly sullied. And the guy said, we'll straighten it out in the media tomorrow. And I said, nah, man, I'm gonna go do it now. The ting goes In number seven, Steven Seagal. Unfortunately, his appearance was anything but good. Before you make this rash decision, you know, perhaps you should see what you're up against. Yeah, yeah, take a gander, Stephen. And, they're, you know, they, they want to fight him. Hey, we'll take you on. He goes, if I do it, I have to beat them up. He enters the banquet room and starts beating. It's live. And he's beating them up and throwing them <laughs> around the room. And it goes on for like eight minutes. Then at the very end, he turns to camera and says... This is what happens when you pollute the planet. And the audience is mystified. Following Seagal's SNL appearance, a few more hits followed, but he was soon relegated to cheap, direct to video action films that no one watched. Maybe nobody wanted to work with him after this. The tingles. In number six, Aja Clemente. During his debut broadcast in April 2013, he let a string of nasty swear words fly just as the opening titles were coming to an end. His career as an anchor was effectively over before it even began. Shit. Good evening, I'm Van Chu. You may Good have day. seen our newest reporter, AJ, on NBC North Dakota News. Thanks, Van. I'm very excited. I graduated from West Virginia University, and I'm used to, um, you know, from being from the East Coast. Clemente was promptly suspended and let go the next day. The incident made him a national celebrity, and he even appeared on Late Show with David Letterman after the host mocked him in a top 10 list. I'm trying to get you the job back in Bismarck. Forget about ESPN. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. The tingles. In number five, Millie Vanilli. In 1989, 
the R&B duo Millie Vanilli released Girl You Know It's True, an album that reached number one and was certified six times platinum. They also scored five consecutive top five singles in the United States, three of which topped the charts. However, a significant hiccup occurred on July 21, 1989, during a live performance for MTV. A technical malfunction caused the track to skip, revealing that singer Rob Pilatus was lip-syncing. This incident sparked doubts regarding the duo's authenticity. It wasn't until their album was released in America that singer Charles Shaw revealed that his work was being credited to Pilatus and Fab Morvan at all. Brad Howell and Sean Davis are the real singers, and I think they should get, they should get this credit. With this, the duo admitted to being frauds, and Millie Vanilli was no more. The tingles, in number four, Sin at O'Connor. Her career came crashing down in October 1992 when O'Connor appeared on SNL. While performing, she ripped a photo of Pope John Paul II to protest the mistreatment of children within the Catholic Church. Soon, she became a public enemy. In the victory of good over the real enemy nothing compares to you would be her last number one while she continues to release music she has not had a top five single in her native ireland since 1994. The in number three ashley simpson this was arguably the biggest gaffe in live television history and the blame pretty clearly fell on simpson while performing on snl in 2004 she accidentally revealed that she was lip-syncing when the vocals of Pieces of Me began to play instead of those from Autobiography. On a Monday, I'm waiting. Tuesday, I'm fading. Not knowing what to do, she awkwardly danced off stage and later blamed the band for playing the wrong song. So not only was she lip syncing on SNL, which in itself is a big no-no, but she proceeded to throw her band under the bus. The tingles, in number two, Will Smith. Rock had made a joke at the expense of Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. Smith initially laughed, but then proceeded to slap Rock for the comment. The audience seemingly believed it was a scripted bit at first, casually laughing at the attack. It wasn't until Smith yelled and cursed at Rock that everyone realized he was dead serious. The resulting silence was painful. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh, wow! The tingles. In number one, Fergie. She was selected to sing the national anthem at the 2018 NBA All-Star Game. Unfortunately, her performance was a little shaky and inappropriately sensual. Many people in attendance could barely contain their laughter. What's so 